Are you searching for your seat? It looks like I'm gonna take this one. Scores higher on this. Apparently, I'm a search engineer. Okay, please. Sir. The intro is basically introducing. This is me. Is this okay? At Atomic Work, we don't see search as a feature, but it's a fundamental piece of everything that we're building across the stack because we know that the fundamental problem is fragmented data and making sense of all that data for all kinds of AI applications across the enterprise. Hi, I'm Gautam. I'm a product manager for all things AI and end user experience. Hi, I'm Navi, principal engineer, search. Hi, I'm Shamit. I'm applied AI engineer at Atomic Work. At Atomic Work, we help employees get the best support possible. Uh, this means talking to all the internal teams that provide this set of support, right? So that would be your IT teams, your HR teams, finance, facilities, and so on. And we're a single shop platform to sort of facilitate all of that. Um, and we orchestrate that with an end user experience in mind and not your traditional process automation, right? Um, with that comes Atom, which is our front facing end user experience, which is an AI conversational agent uh, that you can chat with over text, uh, you can speak to over voice, and it's multimodal, it can see your screen and guide you through various experiences, right? To get you the quickest support possible. And because we're a full stack platform, uh, from that experience, if um, a service teammate, uh, an HR person or an IT person uh, is needed for support, we can create the corresponding tickets uh, in the platform for them to get involved in this complete human in the loop experience we've got. So um, a lot of the core functionalities and capabilities we've built are AI native. Uh, and what that means is there's a lot of context engineering. right? And we know that good context engineering comes from really, really good search capabilities. And that's what we're going to talk about today, pretty much. Um, why don't we start off with uh, like the data side of things, right? Because that's that's really the meat of where all the search starts from. Uh, at Atomic Work, we are multi-source and we pull data from all sorts of systems. Because IT team would be managing um, various applications like Okta um, or Azure AD, Jump Cloud, MDMs, uh, and a host of other applications that that uh, that are used by the entire company, not just by a single department. Uh, whereas um, someone in finance probably is using a NetSuite. Uh, someone in HR is probably using a Rippling or a Workday. And so um, there's a lot of context and, and knowledge pretty much scattered across all these different systems. Um, and bringing in that data is, is a pretty complex problem for search. So uh, Naveen, how do you look at that data problem? When you mentioned there was a lot of apps across all the platforms, right? Legal, um, ITs and stuff. So bringing the data is always complex because it's not structured mm. the way we want it. Yeah. The first thing is, let's say there are multiple categories of uh, entities or categories to it. And then you have knowledge bases where you have confluence, internal wikis, and data. We also have asserts and other data associated with it. Right? Yeah. So when we try to bring in, we try to first unify all the data into one structured source so that we can search on top of mm. it. So the, there is also other sources where you ingest from uh, Slack, Notion, and other mm -hmm. knowledge bases as well. Right? Yeah. So, Ingestion is not just ingesting into a search engine. We also extract a lot of uh, entities before we just put it into a uh, search so that we can use that information to pull the data while searching. Right? Mm. That helps us rank or this, uh, they, they help us uh, discover the mm. uh, documents or information. Right. Yeah. So that's something we do wh while we ingest the data into a data system. Mm. It also helps build those correlations. Uh, yeah, building the correlation is also very important. Say, let's say this ticket is also associated with a file mm -hmm. or an attachment. It also have some wikis associated yeah. with it. So building this knowledge graph is also very important for us to serve the search requests. Right, right. And uh, Shamit, like when you have this sort of great data platform as a base, um, how do you look at building the search experience for various applications? Like, what are, what is that like? How do you go about it? Okay, so that's a good question. Search, um, I feel, primarily has uh, three applications. So it might be a blind search. So this is uh, sort of a needle in a haystack. Like the user is sort of exploring the platform, does not know uh, what he wants, what the content uh, lies behind the uh, knowledge barrier. Mm -hmm. An example can be my laptop is broken, my laptop is acting weird. Mm -hmm. um, then the second category might be um, a targeted search. Mm -hmm. So here the user exactly knows what he's looking mm -hmm. for. He's like, uh, get me all the requests or tickets that I have created or any X person has created, right? right? Um, this is where uh, speed matters. Latency is mm -hmm. something we minimize here. 
Uh, third is uh, a blended sort of an approach, mm. something uh, like what Perplexity does. So this is where things get really interesting mm. because we sort of blend uh, the uh, lower and higher latency yeah. results. Um, so <coughs> we categorize and summarize results across from various sources, various uh, knowledge bases. While you were talking about the applications, what I was thinking about were the various personas, right? Like in Atomic Work, we've got end users that use Atom as mm -hmm. the primary sort of interface, interface they drive. Um, a huge number of queries that, that we handle in coming today. True. And the experiences are, uh, or the expectation from the users from all the enterprises we work with is um, uh, you're, you're almost like a blind search is usually how the user is approaching it. Yeah. Uh, you are probably talking to it over voice on, on uh, Universal Agent or you're conversing with Atom over Teams. Yeah. And you don't really know what the Teams bot can really offer back. Uh, and what that means is you are blind in a yes. way, right? It's like it's like querying into YouTube and not knowing what videos are there behind the behind the search. So it's uh, it's that, but in the context of knowledge articles from maybe SharePoint, Confluence, uh, service catalogs that are defined on the platform, uh, a host of other let's say trusted web searches uh, and things along that line. So I think yeah, to your point, like when we look at the queries that come in just from the Atom search, they're so vastly different from like the other applications, like maybe a Spotlight search. Yeah. If you want to talk about that. So if you talk about the spotlight search, we basically search across all the different entities mm -hmm. like uh, problems, uh, service item, mm -hmm. asserts, and everything yeah. are associated with the ITSM, right? So what happens is uh, it's just not search, just bringing the search and then ranking it. Yeah. We also have to account for each field has a different boosting as well as each field will have a different um, importance in the search results, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say title will have always have some boosting over other fields. Mm -hmm. And we also have description which will be vaguely, <coughs> which has more data into it. Yeah. So we can't boost it so high. So the field level boosting is very important. Then we also have an entity level boosting, mm -hmm. right? Where let's say problems or request has higher yeah. boosting than other uh, entities, right? So yeah. we also boost based on that. And we also, people use the spotlight search just to search for users to know mm -hmm. who he is who his designation is and all those yeah. things, right? So we also uh, give a specific boost for certain values in that, right? So these are the boost, field level boost, and then we also have a entity level boost, and then we also do a re-ranking on top of right. it to give them the best relevant results mm -hmm. for Spotlight. So also like the, I think the queries are so different, right? Uh, in the, from Atom and Spotlight. So yes, <laughs> it's totally different from uh, Atom and Spotlight. Atom people will converse, like yeah. ChatGPT, right? Is my ticket closed or what yeah. is the status of my ticket? Yeah, yeah. But in IDSM, people used to have only two to three keywords. Service Either it can be display ID or the, the ticket ID or just uh, like uh, VPN is not working, is this the subject or something like that. So it's not like a conversation, it's like a more of a keyword uh, uh, search to it. Got it. But what I like about, or what I find very unique when building was this piece of uh, like the spotlight search uh, for the service teams and the agents, they uh, it, the, the data is kind of structured, right? It's structured mm -hmm. pretty well. Uh, at least it follows like a relational structure, yes. right, the data. Um, and the queries were very keyword based. True. Now you take a very similar structure for let's say our conversational analytics or structured search. Um, uh, we saw that the queries were completely different. They were doing yeah. like mathematical queries and things like that. So how do you mold that application now? So, uh, as you said, uh, when it comes to unstructured search, the schemas can be actually pretty random, mm -hmm. right? Uh, as Narveen was saying that we have specific keywords like titles or description subjects that it's pretty easy to boost and search on. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to unstructured data, you do not really know the schema. Mm -hmm. uh, unstructured data can be sort of spreadsheets, tables that uh, the mm -hmm. users wants to query. So what we do here is like we let the user converse with uh, these uh, unstructured, uh, unstructured data in plain English. Mm. Uh, we, uh, and like this opens up a huge potential uh, for the user to you know, uh, run aggregation, mm. uh, get analysis of, okay, let's uh, say the user wants to know uh, how many laptops broke down in the previous uh, few months or mm. uh, what uh, model of a certain laptop or a certain OS is causing mm. the most number of issues. Here we want the results to be very accurate, right? Yeah. Uh, so we need to rely on the aggregation, we need to rely on uh, the mathematical computations as you said uh, we are doing here. So this is where we bridge the gap uh, again with you know uh, supporting unstructured uh, mm. documents, uh, where the user uh, gets a blended experience with also uh, being able to search on uh, like structured through his tickets, through uh, spotlight, through knowledge base, and at the same time, even if the schema is undefined or um, uh, not seen before, we're able to handle uh, that too. Yeah, it's a it's sort of a balance. Right? It's almost the same schema in structure at least, 
is like a this is like a you want good recall in a way yes and this is a much more higher precision and the way you build both applications completely change completely uh, different use yeah, cases use for cases. both uh, different audience for both true, as well true. like one is for admins one thing for agents agencies i think um, from from i think all of us have worked on search systems for for quite a while right i think what makes us uh, a lot different uh, is the entire context modeling that we are doing under the hood right mm -hmm. uh, for a long time we have been saying uh, context is king in the enterprise and uh, i think we are in a very interesting position where we pull data from opta um, your application your asset management systems we do the scanning ourselves uh, your network infrastructure your cloud infrastructure uh, of course your own itsm requests um if there are requests or data on other portals like an hr portal or whatever there, that data also flows in um and, and it's able to now triangulate across all these systems right so uh what, like i think the applications let's say like agent assist for example uh while building it out we wanted to make sure that agent assist was always going to be something where um let's say an incident got created uh you would want the ai agent atom mm -hmm. in this case to proactively go triage across all these different touch points in the context of the requester in okay. the context of the team uh in the context of that asset look at the impacted services and then form like an rca uh, to really then say okay here's the recommendation i've got or here's the next best action i've got um and and that's a place where again uh, the sort of knowledge graph like structure yes. that we have built out uh, has, has really helped uh, i think we can summarize this um, better with an example let's say some user he reports that his wifi is not working mm -hmm. so because we have the context of uh, let's say there's like thousands of users in that organization and there's like multiple stories multiple departments because we have the context of what os the user is using what team he is a part of and which floor which wifi router is closest to uh, through this context if the user mm -hmm. asks uh, a general query that my wifi is not working or what's the uh, credential we are able to respond uh, so this is where like context is king as uh, you <laughs> said uh, we get a lot of uh, use cases like this where it's really important uh, especially in huge organizations it some organizations uh, we have context of what exactly the user is doing and what access he has uh, what team he is working for mm -hmm. even like on the router example like uh, when we when we were working on major incidents we saw that because we have the context of almost which router in which floor if three or four other people if that floor hosts such 20 people and five other people are raising an incident against that router uh, you can classify that group them together or even flag them as a major incident i mean in this case yeah. the criticality is not as high but yeah that would also help us not create duplicate tickets and yeah, manage yeah. it yeah. very easily yeah, right yeah. exactly and as uh, like because we have this entire context layer um you know we can integrate it as memory with these agents the personalization is a phenomenal these days right with the with the adoption we're seeing so i think because of that context awareness we're uh, able to do things like major incidents which is i think just by grouping very similar active requests together and then smartly responding to users we're able to prevent so many duplicate tickets proactively inform people before they have to come to the portal or come to atom and then raise a ticket right yeah it's not only about duplicates right you also have to look into pi data you mm. remove a lot of duplicates you don't uh, store a lot of customer information mm. before even search there are a lot of data you can't search yeah. uh, you shouldn't search so yeah. we basically prevent that the other part is to have the right Uh, data shown to right people mm -hmm. right it's not just showing everything to everyone yeah. so there are certain documents you can't show to a lot of people so you have to be mm -hmm. very good at yeah. filtering that out before you even send it to a yeah. llm or just creating an answer or searching through that yeah right that is basically especially yeah. in platforms like sharepoint where a lot of permissions true uh, are at a file level some are at a folder level some are at a team workspace and like inheriting that and making sure you're not reconstructing permissions as a construct for a company is in itself it's a big uh, unlock uh, and and that's what we hear right like uh, when when it comes to you know the number of times uh, like a cio has come up to me and said uh, uh, hey i don't want to rework my permissions i don't want to rework my knowledge i don't mm -hmm. want to rework my data for your ai to work right and that's okay. that's so common uh, but i think uh, the beauty of the data ingestion we have set up is, is such that you can have pretty dirty data uh, and ai can also be used or leveraged to clean some data yeah. of course uh, adhering to compliance and stuff like that but um i think data governance is uh, it's of course it's it's the biggest blocker for a lot of enterprises to move forward mm -hmm. but in a way the applications we built have accounted for poorer quality data and still ignoring the false positives yes. or ignoring the the true negatives in a way right at atomic work we don't see search as a feature but it's a fundamental piece of everything that we're building uh, across the stack because we know that the fundamental problem is fragmented data 
uh, and making sense of all that data for all kinds of AI applications um, across the enterprise.